Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach and I'm so excited about this video. I've been waiting all day. I got the idea for it right after I uploaded my last video. Obviously, I don't want to step on a video by uploading another one like an hour later. That one did good and now it's time to shine. Um, so, uh, Twitter. <laughs> anyway, okay, so, so people send me screenshots and information. And uh, one of the things, you know, obviously sometimes I go, oh, that's funnier. You type L O L. You can't you can't leave someone hanging. You you gotta at least do an L O L. Um, and uh, but I see stuff like this and I go, what? Why are you promoting your books as if you either a have never read them or b hate them? <laughs> so uh, Lionforge is this company that is very confusing to me. Uh. They look to have some deep pockets with as far as funding, but I swear I can think of like four times that I've ever gone into any comic book store and seen their uh, stuff. They kind of got on them, you know, a lot of notice last San Diego, San Diego Comic Con when they hired Gail Simone to be the architect, and then we didn't really hear anything, and then the next thing we heard of was 30 people got laid off. Which some people are trying to ask me to connect. It's the number of employees they had, or at least you know contractors, was insane. It was like 120, and like I just did Comic Con yesterday, so I was like, I don't remember seeing their name once. And I guess it was on here a couple times, but it's only in graphic novels, and the numbers are really low. We're talking about like 700, 400, 197. 182, 176, like these are really low numbers. So I don't know. And their their market share is 0.14. Wait, is this share of overall units? So I guess that would be market share. 0.14% share of overall dollars, 0.26%. Like it's it's really small. Uh so it was kind of weird when Gail got um announced. Because her first couple times she talked about it, it sounded like she had never read any of the comics and knew nothing about it. And it's nine months later, not much has changed. Okay, so, so well, she's doing... The thing she got hired for, for is coming out. There's a Catalyst Prime universe. I don't know why it's not called the Lion Forge universe. It's, it's Lion Forge. Okay, fine. But it's CPU. Okay, that's, that's cool. Um, and it's... Uh, Okay, so this drives me nuts, and I'm probably going to do another video tomorrow about this new uh, comic company. Uh, it's called Please Netflix. Please, please, please option our properties. Please, they are all available. Please, 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 please option them. Which I guess was the second choice instead of Catalyst Prime Universe. But that's basically every new comic company is literally just Please Netflix, please. Um, which to me is really, like, dumb. It's also, like kind of like a loser it's it's like that thing of like the broke guy with like 12 dollars in his bank account and he's supposed to buy dinner for wifey and the new baby and he and he buys a lottery ticket like j scott campbell supposedly danger girl is being made into a movie although i've heard that a dozen times over the last 20 years danger girl came out like 20 years ago yes there are some comics where you know the the first issue is sold and the next year it's being but i mean that's not even one in a thousand so it's 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 a real mugs game as they would have said in the 1940s yeah mugs uh to focus so heavily on netflix and hollywood when you should focus on comic book readers buying your comic book and reading it um so uh she's doing this um crossover and it's called seven days and it's about there's uh, the the world's gonna end in seven days, and uh, what's gonna happen with all the characters? Now, here two things. Number one, this is actually a fine story that's been done in other places a million times. It's a fine, solid genre storyline. The problem is that it has nothing to do specifically with the Catalyst universe, so it just looks like a plug and play generic way to get you to. Read some okay looking but unspectacular books that no one's really noticed for the last couple of years. I had a I had a friend give a little hot fire hot take. Uh, he said uh, when I said it's oh it's about uh, the catalyst you know the Lions Forge superheroes and it's seven days. It's like they're they're not interesting to follow them for seven days. I was like oh ow you're 
mean? Um, uh, so uh, anyway, so Lion Forge put up this thing because um, uh, Gail Simone, who is their, you know, it's architect, but really it's promotions in her name. They're trying, they're trying to get some heat. That's fine. The problem is they hired someone who just wants to natter on about on Twitter all day and, and seems barely interested and barely knowledgeable. So uh, Lion Forge says, wanting to hop into the Catalyst Prime universe? Not, not really, but okay, let's, let's okay. Gail Simone has made it easy to pick a starting place with her quick elevator pitch of each hero in the thread below. So in this one, uh, and this does look real. I, I checked into this person um, asking Gail to see if this is like a fake account. It looks like a, a, a real account. So this person says, I want to start reading the Lion Forge Hero Universe and have no idea where to start. Help, please. Okay, I'm going to take back. That, that sounds a little, that sounds a little fake, but. So then she answers, and she answers number, uh, several things. Number one, as a space alien wearing a human suit. Number two, as someone who has no real interest, passing knowledge of these books. Uh, and number three, has no knowledge of what motivates people to buy books. So she says, huzzah, who? I have several suggestions. Noble, Summit, Superb, and Quinn Credible are all particularly easy to jump into and painlessly lay out the background of the Catalyst Prime universe. Are you selling axle grease? Are you selling an industrial compound that reduces slip and falls on metal stairs? Like, do you, do you even like these books? Oh boy. So it says, I'll give a quick elevator pitch of each, but the basic idea is meteors blow up stuff. I don't know. This is no, don't, no, don't, don't, don't promote something like you're the mom of someone who made it who's not really interested. Um, so, uh, and then she gives the description of seven of these books, and they're so bad. They're so bad. Noble is our flagship title. It features one of the astronauts who went to destroy the meteors, but came back with powers. It's about a good man, who is also a father and husband, and what he does with his newfound wealth and power. His wife is badass. Okay. <laughs> it's, 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 no, no. I mean, if you're looking for check in the bot, like, art? The artists? Okay. We're, we're promoting things by telegram. Western Union here. Uh, uh, so, uh, Summit is about another of the astronauts, a queer Jewish woman of science. Is that when... <laughs> she's, she's white. Oh. I really wanted to call her a woman of color, but she's white, which is not a color. Can we say she's a woman of science? Um, I love this book. It's action-packed, but full of science and big ideas. But does she love the science? I just, it, does it feel really alien in a human so, suit to say a queer Jewish woman of science? That I, I feel like there's a zipper on your back when you say stuff like that. Um, uh, Superb is about a teen hero with Down syndrome. And then in parentheses, she, she says, and I believe today is International Down Syndrome Day, question mark? You, you you're on the internet. You can check. Also, are you not even interested enough to open another tab and guess or, or search for that? Because I'm pretty sure you would, it would very fast. Um, and his tough girl best friend. He imitates the heroes he loves in comics. This book is full of heart. You'll love it. Quinn Credible is our newest book and possibly my favorite. It's a story of a typical kid in New Orleans who has one power. He's indestructible. He can't fly. He has no super strength, but you can't hurt him. I love this book. I love this book. You'll love it. I love this book. Wow, you're really lazy. Um, and I forgot Kino somehow, which has since being taken over by Alex Pacnadel as writer. Oh, the Alex Pacnadel? Is he of the Grand Rapids, Michigan Pacnadels? Oh, okay. I've not heard of him ever. Uh, Become one of the best superhero books on the stands. I wasn't even aware this existed. It's a political thriller with superpowers, and it's, you gotta say this like in an Oprah Winfrey way, 
Brilliant. I think any of those are a great start. And soon we are having our first event book written by me, Seven Days, which features all of them. It'll be fun watching me pretend to care about these and probably get their first names wrong. Whatever. Who cares? Um, uh, <laughs> and look at the Bafo box office super viral uh, response. One guy says, uh, oh good, look into this for threads because I was thinking, did you get any actual responses to any of these? I know you got to click on them individually. Let's see if anyone responded to the uh, queer woman of science one. Queer Jewish woman of science. Oh, nobody individually. Wait, something. Uh, it is fantastic. And it has an adorable cat named Tesla. Oh my gosh. I love the science. Um, so this is weird. And it's, it's very, very Gail Simone-esque. Oh, I, I forgot to do my little preamble I do when I do Twitter things. Please don't contact, email, tweet, at, describe them in a tweet, misspell their name so they can't find it if they're, they're searching for themselves. Uh, these people treat anything that is not a compliment or agreement as harassment, and they see harassment as on the same level as a physical assault, and they respond accordingly. So then let's go over to white uh which is doing quite bad um it's uh the sequel to black and uh it's uh tracking to make about half as much uh black uh, got ninety thousand and ninety one thousand dollars in uh 29 days uh in, white in 28 days um is uh tracking to make Forty to fifty thousand dollars. So forty-five thousand dollars. It is tracking to make half. Yes, that is half of the book. It is a sequel to. Now I would consider that a huge failure. Let's go see what a, a, a Kwanzer. Let's just. I didn't prep this at all. Uh, so I, you know, right before I started this thing, I uh, went to Kwanzer's page. So let's see what the. Okay, how many days does he have left on this thing? He's got like 10 days. Okay, so 10 days and he's still five grand away from his goal and 10 grand away from making half as much as the book this is a sequel to. So let's see how Kwan's is spending day 10. Uh, okay, so so pin tweet is promoting uh, a white. Okay, and then 54 minutes ago he said it is... Oh wait, I forgot to do the Kwan's voice. It is just willfully ignorant of black people's experience with racism in the U.S. to claim color blindness. And then a book, a, a link to his book. Um, so uh, here is uh, some. Am I gonna? I, sometimes I don't like to click on it because X. So uh, this is for the thing. And uh, like I said, the Jamal Igo, um Artwork is fantastic. This is probably the best artwork I've ever seen from him. He's not usually my style of artist that I like, but this looks good. And I cannot believe he left the other Earth to work on this. It's freaking insane. Um, uh, X, Kareem Jenkins, is lucky to have people like Indigo to watch his back. I thought it said Indiegogo. I got all excited. Mm. Um, so then, uh, then two hours ago, Kwanzaa... Uh, uh, retweeted a screenshot of Larry Hama talking about racism. That's fun! Um, cause when I say it about writing white, people act like their ears don't work. <laughs> so Larry Hama, cheerful man at large, uh, says, uh, to all of you who think calling out racism is racism against white people, GFYMF, I think that means Air moths. Go find your mighty flea. Something like that. Um, so then, uh, oh, yes. suddenly people are remembering Blade one year after Black Panther came out and everyone claimed it was the first black superhero from Marvel. Okay. Um, so this, somebody says, imagine being angry that someone said F white supremacists. 
And then uh, Kwanzaa says, uh, I don't know what they're referring to. Uh, Kwanzaa says, it's a natural reaction if you're a white supremacist. Uh, so then something about the book, that's good. Um, Philadelphia men mock Asian restaurant staff in viral video. Uh, and then Kwanzaa decides to use these people's actual pain to sell his trash book. Again, my writing science fiction about racism is the problem, though. Someone's petty! Okay, so this is three hours ago. And, uh, okay, so this is, he doesn't, he's just talking about race in general, racism in general, but not using it to hawk his book. But this time he is with the exact same word. <laughs> Oh, wait, it's a little slightly different. White people needs... Oh, no, oh, really? Needs... Okay. Okay. White people needs to stop talking about the enslavement of black people like it was just a rough episode of Game of Thrones. Nobody did that. Uh, so this is a quote from Michael Harriet. I don't know. Um says, the slaves in America were not prisoners of war, military slaves, debtors, or subjects of a feudal system. They were property to be bought and sold. That sells comics. Um, so then, uh, something about this, and then... Uh, I mean, is it really hard to understand why the sequel to Black is called White? Or does this flagrant ignorance not require examination? So... Uh, I was looking into, um, uh, I, I've done videos about this, and it's about Trump, who is not Trump, but he's Trump, 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 am I right? Um, and I was just talking to a friend, and, was, and we just started brainstorming, like, what if you were doing a sequel to Black, and it was called White, but you actually cared and wanted people to be interested? So we were like, you know, most of the superpowers for uh, uh, the um, superpower people in the Black universe, which as far as we know, are all black, um, have been physical. I've read, I don't know, four, five, six issues from this franchise. And they've all been physical powers. Flying, super strength, controlling rats. I guess technically that would be a mental power. Um, but what if you had, you found out that it wasn't just black people who had superpowers. White people also had superpowers, but the white people who had superpowers didn't know it. And they were almost exclusively psi, psionic powers. So you would have, uh, you know, a, a salesman who does really good. He outsells everyone. He doesn't know he has powers of persuasion. Um, uh, you know, a, uh, a stockbroker doesn't know that he can actually predict the future. He doesn't know it. He's a, he just he has a good feeling about the stocks, and he's always buying the right thing. You know, uh, and so it find you, you find out that white people have superhuman privilege buzzword oh wait buzzword um and then you can do this good story where you can say oh you know your privilege in society comes from you guys actually having powers you don't know it and then you know people are going to be like no no i worked hard i worked hard for this you know i studied the trends in the stock market i went to school and i studied hard and that's why i do good and they're like no nah, bro no nah, you can see the future um and you have reactions to that no 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 it's gonna be orange man bad um so something about uh okay so looks to be selling his book um Kickstarter of course promotes his book because um uh, uh Kwanzer is connected to the media very very well and he lives a life of utter privilege but it doesn't quite translate into sales. Oh getting back. Oh, okay. So uh promoting it to French people. That's cool. Um, all right. So again, look at this. He's literally just, he's just grab bagging. He's doing the, the Sean White thing. The, the thing is, uh, his name is Sean White, right? Talcum X. He just grabs like random, hey, a, a country of a billion people. Do you think four, um, racism, racist things happen every day and get covered in the news? Probably. What percentage of that? Is that, I don't know, point zero 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 one percent Hey, I'm gonna, he pays his rent off of racism. Uh, Kwanzaa just tries to sell books and, and doesn't do a very good job. So a Virginia uh, police officer serving a majority minority high school has been identified as an active member of the white nationalist group Identify 
E V Ropa. I'm guessing that V is some kind of old fashioned U. Um, and he says, but my ride in science fiction about racism is the real problem, right? No, the problem is that you uh, are a race hustler and you're a really bad writer and you never try to get better. You writing about black people dealing with subject X, Y, and Z is not a problem. Uh, but you calling every single criticism of every single part of anything you do racism is. You're just a bad writer. And the problem is you're not trying. We've watched people get better. We've watched Vita Ayala get better. We've watched Chip Zdarsky get better. We've watched Eve Ewing. Actually, start, she started pretty uh, good. And get better. We've watched all these people get better, except for you. You write the same as you did three years ago. It's nothing but race hustling nonsense. It's predictable, which makes it boring. And every criticism is, oh, because America's racist. Okay. Uh, again, again, selling, using racism to sell his book. White privilege is everywhere. It is all around us, even now in this very room. Hmm. And you're in that room. What a coincidence. Um, you can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel, when I look out my window, I see the front yard, a mailbox, a street, Another bail box, someone else's front yard, and a house that has Hispanic people living in it. I did. Oh, you just opened my third eye because my reflection's in the window I'm looking out. Hashtag woke. Um, you can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay. Okay, what about clip your nails? Well, just. I know in his head he sounds really like, you sound like a clown. To the average black person you sound like a clown. And it sounds like you got nothing. All you got is just like, I'm black, uh, buy my book or you're racist. What am I going to write about? Uh, uh, everything is racist. Uh, uh, like you got no ideas. You're boring, dude. You're boring. Okay, so I'm going to stop this in 24 hours. So, uh, uh, okay, so it's one of the quotes from like the, 30 different um 30 geez it's probably like 40 different articles he's gotten because of his media connections but it did say that there was one that just went up oh two new tweets do we want to guess that one or both of them is going to be about racism and one or both of them is going to be promoting this book let me guess i bet myself one billion dollars so one of them is just promoting his book and one of them from four minutes ago is uh, something, so, uh, some tweets, people reporting tweets. And he says, one of the things I examined in writing white is that the tell for hate groups is that they can't hide their hate. The contradiction comes in less than 24 hours. So I, I won and I now owe myself one billion dollars. But guess what, self? I was crossing my fingers behind my back, fool. Um, so anyway, <laughs> this is, we've been showing promotion uh, for, you know, uh, two people who have both been in the industry 10 years. Uh, they are very, very Twitter famous. Okay, so we, I, I showed, but okay, so we got Comicron. So what are Gail's books that she has out right now? Um, Hot Shots? I don't know if Hot Shots came out. No, it just, it was, uh, so Domino. Okay, so I guess it was a month where she had, like, nothing on the stands. I don't remember her doing anything. Uh, but Domino for the previous months was so good that they relaunched it as a miniseries. So I don't understand why they're so bad at promoting something, but not that they'd ever take this in a million years. Um, uh, because they're not about selling books. They're about being Twitter famous and getting invited to conventions and um, things like that. But first of all, I'm, I feel like I do okay at promoting my books. Number one, you're not a celebrity. Don't think you're a celebrity and don't pretend to be a celebrity. Yes, you might get some people to line up for you at a convention. I'm talking about Gail, not you, Kwanzaa. You're not a celebrity. You're just a regular person. All your neighbors just think you as a regular person. Talk to people as a regular person. Number two, actually be excited about the books you make. Like, why? Why? I, I'm embarrassed I have to say that out loud. 
Gail Simone rarely, if ever, talks about her books. And if she does, it'll just be in passing about how amazing they're doing. It doesn't just describe... We, we saw her just describe seven seven books, and there's no enthusiasm for everything. And it honestly feels like she didn't read any of them. Like, this feels like something you could guess. I like the one where it's like, his wife is badass. Girl, of course she's badass. She's a woman. They all are. Good speech. Um, but, okay, so to, to promote, I feel like I'm okay to pretty good at promoting stuff and stop pretending you're a celebrity. Actually be excited. Um, you know, this might hurt some feelings but out there, but, you know, I... I only promote other campaigns that I, that I bought and I, I'm actually excited about. So I can only promote something I'm excited about. I don't know how anyone else can do that. You know, um, it, it's going to come through. It's going to come through flat and fake. It's just a coincidence I have Gail Simone on the screen when I say come, it's going to come through uh, fake. It's going to come through fake. Like, it doesn't sound like she's read this. And with Kwanzaa... It's a, it looks like he has absolutely no faith in his book that he constantly used to have has to use real life, you know, examples of racism to sell his orange man bad book that he spent no time trying to come up with an original idea for. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Again, please don't contact at any of these people. Just leave them alone. Um, they're celebrities. They're famous. Um, uh, but um, anyway uh, thanks for watching and I'll have more <laughs> I'm going to stop saying more new comic reviews because they're not going to be every day there's going to be videos every day but they're not going to be new comic uh, videos every day because comics suck right now and nobody's buying them and they're awful just because people like this are considered pros or behavior like this is considered professional anyway thanks for watching bye